Hey babes and welcome back to my channel. I have a special guest today. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Marianne. So Marianne has a YouTube channel as well and her YouTube channel is about NVC. What is NVC? Well, it's really tough for me to explain shortly, but it's um, a way to communicate that is more honest, but without like I don't know, scaring people off, it's more honest in a kind of connecting way, and that's what I really like about it. And NVC means non violent It stands for non violent communication. communication. Yeah. So it's a really, really interesting topic, and you should really hop on to her channel to learn more about it. It's an amazing channel, so everyone go follow the link in my description below so that you can follow her and also learn more about NVC. But here today, we're just going to do her makeup. So now we have the blank canvas and well, Marianne wanted to do like a very natural looking makeup today. So that's what we're going to do. And I think it could be kind of like a going back to school makeup look or maybe a daily look of makeup that you wear to work, whatever. So we're going to do that and we're going to show you how to achieve that look. So if you want to see how we're going to make her look amazing, then just keep on watching. So we're going to start with priming the face. I always like to just make the face a little bit wet before I start putting anything. And for that, I'm going to use the Fix Plus Prep and Prime by MAC. It's just going to be a few spritzes on your lovely face. <laughs> so close your eyes. Yes, like that. You can open your eyes. <laughs> It's not toxic, don't worry, but it's always just good to hydrate the face before you start applying makeup and that's why we're also going to use a hydrating primer because Mariana told me that her face tends to flake very often then we can already understand that we're dealing with very dry skin so for that I'm going to use the Ambriolis it's very very hydrating and therefore really works well as a base for the face I usually put it with a flat brush, the type of brush that you usually use for applying foundation. The product you put on first, like in what sense is it different from just spraying water in my face? That one also contains other ingredients in it that are very good for nourishing the skin and it also helps adhering the foundation to the mm -hmm. face because it also has a bit of glycerin, if I'm not mistaken, and that is a little bit like a glue. Mm. So it makes sure that the foundation really sits on the face and stays mm. all day long. Mm. The thing standing behind me wanting to try and start specifically with concealer is that many times when you use concealer, you already give much more unified appearance to the face, and then you might need to use so much less foundation. Mm. So that really helps giving us that nice fresh look when you just want to look as if you woke up like this. I'm going to use the Maybelline Age Rewind and I'm using that corrector shade because we want to really like brighten the under eye. You can look up. I'm also putting it here where there's always a very, very dark vein that we usually want to also hide. And I'm um, using a very small beauty blender sponge to just blend it. So what we put right now was used more as like a corrector and brightening concealer to hide the worst of the dark circles under the eyes. And now we're going to use a color that fits the rest of the skin tone more naturally. Since this is the first time I'm doing Mariana's makeup and I don't know exactly her skin tone, that what I'm going to do now is a patch test, you could say. And it's something that I also recommend to you to do if you're at a store and you want to find the right shape for you. So let's see what I'm going to do next. So when you do a patch test, then you just take this part and you put a bit of foundation on it, a little bit on the face, and you also drag a little bit down towards the neck. 
and that way you can see does it match my skin because we always try and make sure that our foundation will also match the neck so that it doesn't look like we are two different colors and many times on our face it can be much redder or sometimes more tan sometimes less tan and that's why we always just want to try and match it with what's happening on the neck So as you can see here, I have four patches of color that I put here. And what I recommend to you to do if you're at a store, make sure to have this on your skin for at least five minutes. And after five minutes, you can also see, and this is really important, if one of the colors starts oxidizing. When a foundation oxidizes on your face, it means that it usually becomes darker or more orange and then although initially maybe it looked like a perfect match after five minutes it might become like an oompa loompa party on your face so you need to check that before you purchase the foundation even if initially it looked like it's going to fit you perfectly so we're going to just keep that on and in the meantime I'm just going to powder what I already did with the concealer. I prefer using loose and transparent powders for setting under eye specifically. They're very light, so they tend to look a bit less cakey, which is definitely what we like. No cake. In makeup, we don't like cakes. Let's take a look at our patches. I think I will mix the two, the one on the outside and the one in the middle, and that will give us your perfect skin tone. Yay. In case you guys are curious, then we have here the Wet n Wild. It's the Photo Focus Foundation, and here is the Healthy Mix Serum by Bourgeois. Let's start bouncing this around. Right now I'm not going to set it, at least not immediately, because many times, this is by the way maybe an important tip, many times on dry skin you don't even have to powder. Yes, I've said it. You don't even have to powder. Sometimes. But, but we will see. So for now I'm not going to put any powder on it yet. And after a while we will see if maybe the t-zone becomes a little bit more oily or not and maybe then we will so for now we're not touching it and i'm going to move to the eyes and then we'll go back to the face after we know better how it reacts so just close your eyes so now i'm using the same concealer that i used under the eyes and i'm going to use it as an eye primer to just unify the color of the lid so that we have a beautiful blank canvas to work on. This we do want to set immediately so that we don't have any creasing. Setting the eyelid also helps to apply the eyeshadow later much much more easily. So we're starting by just putting a light color all over the eye. This will also help us further to blend more easily when we use darker colors on the eye. And now to start, we're just going to put a very, very light, kind of like peachy brown, up in the crease. As you can notice, I feather the color a little bit outwards it gives it a much lighter look. Now I'm going to take just a slightly darker, also kind of like peachy brown, and I'm going to place that right at the corner of the eye to give it a bit of lift. So just at the outer third of the eye. And I can also incorporate it a little bit into the crease, but not all the way, just out here. So now to give the eye a little bit of 
shine and like a very awake look that I'm going to take this peachy pink color that is shimmery right in the middle and I'm going to put it on the rest of the lid so it's about two-thirds the way inward into the lid. I'm also now using a bit of a brighter color very close to the inner part to like brighten the inner corner. This also helps give you a very awake look. So now we're going to just accentuate the bottom lash line by using the same crease color that we put initially and we're focusing, you should actually open your eyes, <laughs> and we're focusing on the outer edge mostly. We're not taking it all the way in, we're just focusing on the outer third. And I'm taking also that slightly darker brown, and I'm going to put that even closer to the lower lash line. This is to further give a lifted look to the eye. Do you know how to use it? Dude, <laughs> because I hate doing it to other people. <laughs> Oh, you're a pro! <laughs> wow! I'm impressed! I'm using a Kiko mascara that unfortunately does not exist anymore. <laughs> it's called the Ultra Tech. They relaunched a few months ago all of their mascara, so sadly this one left the building forever. <laughs> Sad. Okay. You have fabulous lashes. Absolutely yeah. fabulous. <laughs> now we're just going to slightly trace the brows with some brow powder. This specifically is by Essence. It's called Brow Stylist Set. You have a brighter and darker color. So I'm just going to gently trace the brow. I'm starting with a brighter color. Right here we have a bit of a hole, so we're going to use the darker color for that part. We'll set it with a clear eyebrow gel. So now is a good time to see if indeed the face needs powdering or not. It's been a while. And it actually seems like it settled pretty nicely. I would maybe only put a bit of powder around the T-zone, but even then, very, very lightly. And that's it. So now I'm going to contour the face with a nice big fluffy fan brush. I'm going to use the Kevin Aquan Sculpting Powder, if I remember correctly. This is in light, and I'm just going to go under Mariana's beautiful high cheekbones <laughs> to just chisel the face a bit. As you can see, the shape of face that Mariana has is not wide at all at the jaw and therefore I am not going to use any sculpting powder on it because that way we will only make it appear more narrow. So we're focusing only here and we'll put also a little bit around the sides of the forehead and that's it. And if you notice, the area in which I placed the contour powder is just a bit higher than the actual hollows of the cheeks because that gives us a more lifted look. I'm now going to use the Butter Bronzer, this is by Physician's Formula, and we're going to bronze up the face a bit, very lightly, to give it this healthy glow. I always like to put a little bit on the bridge of the nose, it just gives it a more realistic look. I'm 
For blush, I'm going to use a color that almost fits everyone. It's Baby Doll. This is by Essence. It's their Silky Touch Blush. And whenever I put blush, it always in the beginning looks a little bit too much to me. So I always take my beauty sponge again and go a little bit on top of it to make it look more subtle. For highlight, I'm going to use a highlight by the company called Freedom. It's a really cheap drugstore brand, but they have some really nice products and the highlight is definitely one of them. This specific shade is a bit pinkish and it's called Brighten. Yes, I also put a little bit on the cupid's bow. So as you can see, I usually prefer filling up the lip also with the lip pencil because then we always get a fuller, more opaque color payoff. And also once the lipstick fades off, we kind of like have a second protection layer that will peek through once it fades. I'm going to put a lipstick by Estee Lauder and it's called Dynamic. So here's the final product, <laughs> the final makeup look. And I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful for you if you liked it. Please make sure to give it a big thumb up. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet. It's that little red button below saying subscribe. And also, don't forget to follow me on all my social media platforms. On Instagram, I'm Yofi Beauty. And on Facebook, I'm Yofi Beauty Doreen Makeup Artist. I hope you enjoyed the video and we will see you in the next one. Bye, babes!